New Year's weekend. We were traveling east on Florence at about 8 o'clock. Okay, well, I want you to approach the diagram. No problem. To show us where your car was and how the collision occurred. I was in the left-hand lane, um, and I was driving the blue Sonata, and she was in the middle lane driving the Mustang. We were side-by-side when she merged into my lane and hit the passenger side of my car. I proceeded to follow her to where we pulled over and then waited for the police to come. You waited for the police to come. You can return to the podium at this point. And you had a conversation with them and with the defendant. And yes. what did you discover at that time? Um, I asked her if she had any insurance. She informed me that she had just purchased the car and that her father would be bringing the insurance car down. The father never showed up. Her brother showed up. And they said they could not tow the car due to COVID, so they would allow her brother to drive her car home. Why did they allow your brother to drive the car home? Because I informed the officer that I had just barely purchased a car off of OfferUp. Did you have a driver's license? No. Ms. Villalo. <laughs> well, It's um, not funny. It was during COVID, so at the time, um, it was really hard to get an appointment and stuff. How could and you then I was working two jobs because I was, like, the main provider for my house, so I never had days off that I went You home. were working two jobs? Yes. What jobs were you working? One as a hostess and then another as a server. You were the only one working in your household? At the time, yes, because my mom was getting a bone marrow transplant. She's still recovering from it. So I was, like, helping her out and stuff. You didn't have insurance either? Yeah, because I just barely purchased the car off of offer. You seem very cavalier. You know what the word cavalier means? No, very I don't. Very casual about, it. yeah, I didn't have a <laughs> license. I didn't have insurance. Yeah, I went into the wrong lane. Yeah, I'm not going to pay you because uh, I don't think you're telling me the truth. Right? No, I'm definitely already on my on the track of getting it. I'm not saying I'm not going to do it. It's just at the time, it was very difficult for me. I had a lot of other things that I needed to prioritize. Okay. But, you know, I'm going to get it in order. All right. So now what you need to prove to the defendant is that you incurred these out-of-pocket so, um, expenses over and above the damage to the car. What were they? So I sent Ms. Villalobos the screenshots from GEICO showing that GEICO only covered $3,500. I sent her the screenshot where the screenshot shows the damage to my car was $4,872 and that I was coming after her for the $1,372. Page 11? As well as the rental costs. And that shows in the text message evidence in Exhibit B. Yeah. And what I think happened is that you misunderstood what the plaintiff was telling you. You had the idea that the repair amount covered the 1,000 and you couldn't figure out why she was coming after you. Is that right? Yes. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt on that. (laughs) No, yeah, you're right. Judge Tawalda. Well, okay, but (laughs) Ms. Simon gave you the option that if you didn't believe the receipts, if you didn't believe her, hey, call my insurance company. They'll explain this to you. Why didn't you take that option? I didn't see the number. You know, you could have anyway. You didn't need her permission. I didn't even know that you could do that. Now, I understand that you said you were prioritizing at the time. You didn't have insurance. You didn't have a license. That was two years ago. Do you have insurance and license today? I have insurance, still no license. Why not? I'm still working on it. You're still working on it? Yeah, because the tickets, I had to pay those first. What tickets? I had, like, two parking tickets. That's it. You seem to be prioritizing work, but the money that you're working for is essentially going to the consequences you're having to suffer because you don't have insurance. I have bills to pay now that can be held. So, like, I have rent, you know? Like, we all do, right? Right, exactly. So I'm, like, only one in my household trying to figure it out. No, I get it. And, again, that's commendable, but at some point you've got to take responsibility. Of course. You're getting citations. You're getting caught up in accidents. Where does this plaintiff stand in terms of her damages, right? Do you agree that you owe her money to fix her car? Yes? Yeah. She obviously reached out to you, correct? Yeah. She basically told me about all that. And like I said, I thought that her insurance covered her complete cost. So then I was like, oh, so why do you need me to pay you? Let's look at the damages. I want to just verify that these photos were pretty accurate. Miss Simon, is that yeah. your car there? Yes, that's Damaged? mine. Okay. 2017 Sonata. And the pictures under your exhibit, uh, Miss Villaloba, that right there, accurate? Yeah. Have you gotten that repaired? Yeah. So you paid out of pocket? Yep. How much did you pay? Uh, like 200. Oh, so you got like a hookup? Yeah. <laughs> this diagram is really concerning to me because blind spot's one thing, but it looks like y'all were side by side. You didn't see her? No, it's because my thing was, um, I was low on gas. So I was going really slow. So as soon as like I turned, she was already there and I didn't see and boom.